Okay. We're doing the Lewis structure of the iodate series, periodate, iodate, iodite, hypoiodite, and iodide. And we're going to see how the uh, different rules for drawing Lewis structures come into play. So the first step is to do an accounting of how many valence electrons there are in the molecule. Uh, iodine is group 17, so it likes to have seven valence electrons. Oxygen is group 16, so it likes to have six. And there is an extra electron added to account for the negative charge on the polyatomic ion. So the total number of electrons in our, that have to be accounted for in our Lewis structure is 14. We begin by drawing the iodine as the central atom, adding oxygen atoms as satellites. And that uses up eight electrons. So that means we have, uh, I don't know what am I doing? I forgot to put the four. Sorry about that. Four times six is four oxygen atoms. 24 plus eight uses 32 electrons. Thank you for pointing that out. All right, so we use up eight electrons, and uh, that is going to leave us with 24 more. And we're going to disperse them around the oxygen atoms. So four times six is going to give us 24. Notice how they're paired because the, the orbital is filled. And that's going to give us a minus one charge on each oxygen atom. When we do the charge accounting for charge, uh, remember that the number of electrons that the atom wants to possess, as it were, is related to its position on the periodic table. So oxygen being a chalcogen is in group 16, wants to have possession of six electrons. All the octets are filled here, by the way. And I also point out that because iodine is, has an atomic number greater than 15, it is able to accommodate expanded octets. So anything that is as big as phosphorus or bigger, including phosphorus, is able to accommodate expanded octets. So that allows us to um, help dissipate the, the uh, formal charges. Iodine is going to have a formal charge of plus three, and the reason for that is because it wants to have possession of seven electrons, being a halogen in group 17, but it only actually has possession of four, because bonding pairs count for one when you, when you account for charges. Therefore, this is going to have a formal charge of plus three, all these oxygen atoms, the way they're drawn in the Lewis structure, will have a, a formal charge of minus one. So overall, the molecule would have a formal charge of minus one, but this is not uh, a very good Lewis structure because there's a, a ton of formal charges in it. And it really doesn't make sense for a plus three and a minus one to be so close together. What would really happen is the electrons would be shared in such a situation. And that's, what, that's how we're going to modify, modify our structure to reflect that. We're going to take these... Uh, lone pairs and turn them into bonding pairs and that'll be a better a more accurate reflection of what the molecule is like and what this symbolizes because Lewis structures are only a snapshot of, of uh, basically an accounting of the electrons it actually doesn't look like that. What you really have is seven bonds being shared over four positions because the electrons are continuously moving. So the formal charge of minus one is still there, but it's shared over the four positions. So the bond character, predict the, I predict that the bond character, uh, character for the periodate molecule will be one and three quarters, or seven over four. If there's a seven over four bond character, the, all these four are equivalent because of resonance. And traditionally what they'll do is redraw the molecule in a number of different ways, showing that that single bonded oxygen at all the different positions. But really, a better way of, uh, of understanding it is to say they're all equivalent, and those seven bonds are distributed evenly, evenly over those four positions. In the case of iodate, we have iodine, oxygen, the extra electron, seven for the iodine, three times, uh, six times three for the oxygen, and one electron for the charge. 18 plus eight gives you 26 electrons for iodate. We'll draw our preliminary structure. And uh, that uses up six electrons. So we have 20 more to disperse. We'll disperse 18 on the oxygen atoms. Each one gets six. And then the remaining two go on the central atom. 
And when we do the accounting, all the, all the octets are fulfilled, so that's not a problem. But we're going to have a formal charge of minus 1 on each oxygen atom and a formal charge of plus 2 on the iodine atom if we draw it this way. So we're going to remedy it by moving these lone pairs to turn them into bonding pairs. And that will be a better drawn Lewis structure. And there will still be a negative 1 charge on it the way they're supposed to be. You have then iodite. Seven for iodine, six oxygen, uh, six electrons for oxygen, and there are two, and then one electron for the negative charge. Here's the iodine atom as a central atom, two oxygens as satellites. Twelve plus eight gives us twenty. Electrons have to be accounted for. Uh, so we used up 2, 4, plus the 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. Two, four, six, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, sorry. I made an extra, I had an extra one. Okay. Uh, so that would give us a minus one charge on each oxygen atom. And the charge here would be plus one because iodine would be missing the one for the charge consideration. It wants to possess seven again, but it only has two, four, five, six. Remember that when we count for charge, we count bonds as one. We count lone pairs as two. The way to remedy this structure is to take a lone pair and turn it into a bonding pair, and the structure would look like this, finally. And there's our formal charge. The lone pairs are still there. The last one. <laughs> so every time we have a lot of formal charges, we turn them into bonding pairs, double? Yeah, because if you think about it, whenever you separate charges, there's work involved. When two particles are attracted to each other, there's a plus and a minus charge, they're going to want to... Uh, diffuse that charge. It's like trying to it's like trying to pile water into a, into a into a mound. You can't mound water; it'll just flatten out onto the table. So the electrons behave in the certain in the same way. The um, the charge separation is not viable. It's like trying to create a pile of water. So they'll tend to diffuse each other. They'll be attracted to each other until the charge separation is 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 uh, dissipated. And that's how we portray that in the um, in the Lewis structure that the electrons are shared. When you have something that has a high plus charge and something else has a high minus charge, electrons are going to be attracted uh, into that, in between those two bonds, in between those two atoms, so as to dissipate that charge separation. Okay? And then, of course, when we portray this molecule, we're, we're actually showing something that's going to have uh, three bonds shared over two positions. So the bond character here is going to be one and a half. They're equivalent. Both of these are exactly the same because imagine the electrons moving at two-thirds the speed of light. They're, they're like a standing wave. They're zipping around in there and you can't even see them, but they create a sort of force field where the, uh, the presence, the concentration of electrons in here is equal to the concentration of electrons in there, if you want to put it in those terms. So, but because the Lewis structure has to portray is an accounting of where electron, how many electrons there are, it is necessarily captures a sort of snapshot. The last one, hypoiodite, um, I'll do the accounting up here, it's going to be kind of cramped, but I think we can do it. Seven for the iodine, six for the oxygen, one extra charge, one extra electron for the charge, the formal charge, so it gives, it's going to be 14 electrons that have to be accounted for. You connect iodine and oxygen, and then you disperse the remaining 12 electrons. And although you might be tempted to uh, show a double bond, you could argue that that's one of the possible Lewis structures, but I, my guess is that it's a low percentage of the time that the molecule will look like that. 
So you can leave the molecule drawn this way. There has to be a formal charge. Oxygen is the more electronegative element involved here, so it's more likely to accommodate the extra negative charge. So we leave that one unmodified. And lastly, we have uh, iodide. Uh, we don't even have to draw the table. It has seven electrons plus one for the formal charge, so you're going to draw it like this. It, looks, it has a, a noble gas configuration because it has a filled octet, and that's a stable iodide ion.